Hey guys, so as you know, I'm not here. Um, they shut down the nursery and I'm doing the best I can, trying to figure out a way to get back in the classroom to help you review for your midterms next week. Um, that being said, go ahead and take your midterm review and switch it with someone around you. Make sure you write graded by at the bottom. And your name. So tonight, your midterm terms are due. It is the last thing on your midterm review. Um, some things just to remind you, some classes I said it, some I might have missed it, but inductive and deductive reasoning are technically terms on your test. I didn't list them on the terms page. Um, you don't have to like write them out or anything, um, but just so you're aware, it is on the midterm. Um, the reason I didn't is because earlier on in like the, I don't know, the 30s on your midterm review, um, you have to... Tell me if it's inductive or deductive reasoning, and I figured if, you know, you were making those choices and you knew the difference between the two. So just make sure for your test that you know that. Also, something to note, numbers 78 and 79, while they're both very good questions, they are very similar, and that wasn't my intent. Um, they're both asking you to list the sides from shortest to longest, being given angles. You also need to do the opposite, or need to be able to do the opposite, where you are given side lengths, like two, four, five, um, and you need to be able to list the angles, you know, from smallest to largest, or whatever it asks you for. So you would use the side, like a uh, smallest side is two, so the smallest angle is C, the medium side is four, so the medium angle is A, and then the biggest side is five, so the biggest angle is B. So you need to be able to do this as well. Hopefully that was enough time for you to get ready to grade. These remaining numbers are two points if they're incorrect, but they tried. They're five points if they skipped. Um, number 76 absolutely has to have work or it counts as a skip. Uh, virtual you can just be going through and writing down the correct answers. Um, I'll, I'll probably be grading yours from my house. So your teacher can pause here and then whenever you're ready, take out 3.5. It says 3.5 midterm notes, but it's really just chapter three. Before we even start, um, there are opportunities for bonus points in this section. Um, your teacher is going to pick people who I paused. I don't really know where I left off, but there's opportunity for bonus points. Um, your sub can elect people for paying attention during the lesson, for staying engaged, for working hard, for completing whatever they feel is necessary. Sounds good to me. Um, so that being said, in the number one and two, I'm just going to review some of these and then I'm going to let you go and do them by yourself and then we'll come back together and grade. So in these first two, determine which of the lines are parallel and perpendicular. Um, in order to know that, you need to know the slope. You need to find the slope. Uh, this is the formula that most of y'all remember for some interesting reason. Um, it's y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Sorry, um, my kids are in here, so it's going to be interesting. Um, so remember that slope is rise over run. That's why it's a fraction like this. Um, some things to remember about parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines have the same, oops, it's on this, have the same slope. And perpendicular lines have the opposite sign. Hopefully you're writing this down as review. Opposite sign and flipped slope. Nom, 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 nom. That's right, son. As an example, if you had one half, one half is positive, the opposite of positive is negative, and then you would flip it. You would put two over one, but obviously we're educated and we would just leave it as a two. Um, if you had negative four over three, opposite of negative is positive, and then you'd flip it to three over four. Those would be perpendicular to each other. So in number one, all you do is you find the slope of each line. So find the slope of A using the slope formula. Find the slope of B using the slope formula. Find the slope of C using the slope formula. You get the picture. 
Then you're going to list which are parallel using the correct notation. Line blah blah is parallel to line blah blah. And then perpendicular line blah blah is parallel to line blah blah. You are required to show the slope formula. Okay. Same thing on number two. You're going to find the slope of each line and then determine them parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Justifying your answer, you could just show your work and that will justify it for me. The next three, I don't know why they're all called three, three, and three, but you know, whatever. There's three steps for them. Uh, for any problem that looks like these, I would write them down. There are three steps, one, two, three. The first one is to find the slope. So if you remember, parallel lines have the same slope, perpendicular lines have opposite um, and flipped. Step two is to plug it into point slope formula, where you plug in a point and you plug in the slope. Looks like that, y minus y1, oh dear, equals m times x minus x1. And then last, you want your answer to look like y equals mx plus b. Those are the three steps we are going to follow. So in the first question, write the equation of a line passing through the given point that is parallel to the given line. So parallel means we're going to have the same slope in our new line as what is in our old line. So in our old line, it is written in y equals mx plus b form, which we love because m is the slope. So negative one-third is the slope of the old line. Parallel to negative one-third is negative one-third. So we're going to, that's step one, find the slope. Well, the slope is going to be the same. Step two, we're going to plug in to point slope formula. So we're going to plug in the y that they gave me, which was 2. We're going to plug in the slope that they, well, you know, that's parallel to the slope given. So parallel to negative 1 third is negative 1 third. And then we're going to plug in the x coordinate that they gave me, which is 3. We're going to distribute. So we'll have negative 1 third x. Negative one-third times negative three. If you don't remember how to multiply fractions, negative one-third times negative three. You write it over, um, you write your whole number over one. Zoe, I'm, t I'm teaching. You can, you can play with my Christmas tree. Go ahead. Negative times negative makes a positive. Um, and then you can multiply it across. One times three is three. Three times one is three. This reduces to one. So, you know, one-third of three is one, so that sounds good. Last step, I want it in y equals mx plus b, so I'm going to add two to have y equals negative one-third x plus three. So that is the answer to that first question. For the second question, you can eat his veggie straws, yep. For the next question, write the equation of a line passing through the point that is perpendicular to the given line. So we need to know the slope of the old line so that we can find the opposite sign and flipped slope. That'll be perpendicular. So they gave us this. It is not written in y equals mx plus b. We need to have it written in y equals mx plus b. So we need to get y by itself. So in order to do that, we're going to subtract the 2x on both sides. This will cancel it out on the left. We'll only have y on the left. You can't combine letters with numbers, so you're just going to write them next to each other, and you want to write it with the x first and the positive 1 second. This is so it is written in y equals mx plus b form. So the slope of the old line is negative 2. We want to find perpendicular to negative 2. It's going to be the opposite sign, so it's going to be positive, and then flipped. 2 is invisibly over the number 1, just like all whole numbers. So when we flip it, my perpendicular slope is going to be 1 half. So step 1, find the slope. Done. Step 2, plug it into point slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Why did I get 
We're going to plug in the y coordinate, which is 0. That should make life easy. Um, we're going to plug in the perpendicular slope, which we said was 1 half. And then we're going to plug in the x coordinate, which is 4. y minus 0 is y. Distribute, we'll get 1 half x. 1 half of negative 4, hopefully you know this. 1 half of negative 4 is negative 2. You're going to do the last one whenever um, this video ends. So we're going to move on to the next page for now. This section talks about transversals. So transversal is a line, oops, this one, a line that touches two or more lines. So like this is a transversal line that touches two or more lines. It forms angles and angle relationships. I would take out a highlighter just to remind yourself which angles are congruent. So with your highlighter, I'm, you know, I would highlight this angle is congruent to this angle and this angle and this angle. Which means this angle is congruent to this angle and this angle and this angle. I'll explain why in a second. All of this is because of relationships, like this angle and this angle, they are corresponding. They're in the same location on the transversal. Just like these two angles, they're alternate interior. They're inside of the double lines um, and on opposite sides of the transversal. Um, just like these two are alternate exterior. They're on the outside of the double lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So the ones we highlighted in the same color are congruent to each other. And as you can see, this angle and this angle are congruent. And then our reasoning will be, so they're congruent, so we're going to set them equal. Because congruent means same measure, so they're equal in measure. And our reasoning is because alternate exterior, so remember, they're on the outside of the double lines, on opposite sides of the transversal, alternate exterior angles are congruent. So that's our reason. Now we just need to solve. So we're going to distribute 2x, 2 times 10 is 20. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. We always want to move the smaller x, so that's 2x here. So I'm going to subtract that. So 20 equals x minus 24. So the last step to get x by itself is to add 24. So x equals 20 plus 24 is 44. On the second, again, if you went through and highlighted which are congruent, these two are congruent, these are congruent, because again, you've got corresponding, they're both in the top left of their intersection, um, you've got alternate interior angles are congruent, alternate exterior angles are congruent, vertical angles are congruent, because, you know, they're vertical to each other, so are these. But if you notice, 4x minus 12 and 120 are not going to be congruent to each other. So if they're not congruent, then the other option is supplementary. These two angles are called consecutive interior. That's because they are inside of the double lines and on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the top of the transversal. So that means consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So this is our reasoning for what we're about to do. If they're supplementary, that means they add up to 180. So 4x minus 12, which is this angle, plus 120 will equal 180 degrees. So combine. Minus 12 plus 120 is plus 108. Subtract 108. 
4x equals 72, divide by 4, and x equals 18. So that's all I'm going to review with you, with you for now. You're going to either work by yourself or with a partner. It's up to you. Uh, remember, if you work with a partner, you do need to wear a mask to protect yourself. Um, I'm telling you all, you do not want to be quarantined because, you know, you were exposed to someone. So make sure you're being smart or, you know, exams during January instead of December will not be, you know, that's no fun. No bueno. Um, so go ahead and pause here. Work on this assignment either by yourself or with a partner. So when going over the answers, here's the formula. So when you take T, which would be these two, I know it looks confusing with this point, but when you take T and you plug it in, you get 3 over negative 4. This is the same thing as negative 3 over 4. With Q, you should get 1. A slope of 1. With P, you should get a slope of 1. With R, you should get a slope of 3 over negative 4. And with S, you should get a slope of negative 1. If you are virtual and watching this before completing it, um, please understand that all of the work is required. And the same thing in class. All of the work is required um, in this. This is solely for you to check your answer and make sure you know what you're doing. And number two, the same thing, you would find the slope of the first line using the slope formula. So for the first line, you got the first y, which is zero. Oh, I didn't even finish answering the first one. My B, go back. We want to list on the first which are parallel and which are perpendicular. Parallel lines have the same slope. So we've got line Q parallel to line P. Okay, we also have T and R. Line T is parallel to line R. They have the same slope. Then you want to look for perpendicular, which means they would have opposite sign and flipped. So perpendicular negative 1 is 1. So that means line Q is perpendicular to line S. Line P is perpendicular to line S. So this is also part of the answer. Back to number two. Take the first y, take the second y, plug them in. Take the first x and the second x and plug those in. Notice how when I plug in that negative two, there was already a negative there. This is going to change into a positive. So the slope of the first, zero minus two is negative two. 2 plus 2 is 4. We do reduce in math. This is negative 1 half. For the second, you do the same thing. Take the y, the first y, and the second y. Plug them in. Take the x's. Plug those in. Minus 2 minus 4 is negative 6. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. This reduces to 2. So if you compare them, they are opposite sign and they are flipped. So I'm going to write under, this is line 1 is perpendicular to line 2. Number 3, sorry we're on the back, so you flipped because we did all, I lied, we did not do all the rest of them together. We did not do this last one on the front page. Write the equation of the line passing through the point that is perpendicular to this given line. So again, this line is not written in y equals mx plus b, so we need to make it. So we want to get y by itself. We need to move that negative 5. We're going to add the 5 to both sides. Again, you can't add a letter and a number, so you're just going to write them next to each other with x going first. So, the slope of the old line is 1, perpendicular is opposite sign, so opposite of positive is negative, and then reciprocal, every whole number is invisibly over the number 1, so when you flip this, it's just going to be 1 over 1, which is 1. Perpendicular to positive 1 is negative 1. So this is the slope I'm going to plug in. 
to y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Final answer, once you've plugged everything in, is y equals negative x plus 5. Again, make sure you have the work to match this answer. Now we're on the back. Um, we're just going to talk about whether they were congruent or supplementary. So, these two angles, they're corresponding. So they are equal to each other. So when you solve, and again, show your work for solving, you get x equals 8. And then for number 4, it's helpful knowing what's congruent. I know this angle is congruent to this angle. And I know it looks... Well, it looks a little confusing. This angle is in this corner. It's closer to that corner, but also they wouldn't have... You see this too? This is them telling you, find the value of this angle, and then it would help you out to find this one. Because these two are alternate interior, they'd be congruent. That's one option. But I'm just going to keep highlighting which are congruent. Um... 142, and then across from it, the vertical will be, this will be congruent, and this will be congruent. So this angle, which is where 2x, 2 times x plus 9 is, is not equal to 142. It's going to be supplementary to 142. So you're going to add them, and they'll equal, whoop, they'll equal 180, and you will get x equals... 10. Again, make sure you have all of the work for this. The last two, find the measure of angle 1 and angle 2, explain your reasoning. Yes, you do need to explain your reasoning. Um, I would just explain what relationship they were. These two are vertical, so the measure of angle 1 is going to be equal uh, because they were vertical. And those are congruent. Um, I would say angle 3 is going to be the same because they're alternate exterior, which are congruent. <laughs> Last, the measure of angle 2. If I know that this one is 112, I know angle 1 and angle 2, angle 1 and angle 2 are consecutive interior, which are supplementary. So 180 minus 112 is 68. Last, we've got 45 degrees. I know angle 3 and 45 are consecutive interior, which are supplementary. So 180 minus 45 is 135. Um, I know that 45 and angle 1 oops, are corresponding, and corresponding angles are congruent. So the measure of angle 1 is 45. And then last, I also know that 1 and 2 are corresponding. So angle 2 is going to be 45 as well, because angle 1 and angle 2 are corresponding which are congruent. You know, that's just a lot. There it is. Your teacher can choose um, who was the most engaged and who worked the hardest. Um, and go ahead and write down those names so that I can add bonus points to your midterm. Again, I don't know when I'm going to be back, but I'm doing the best that I can to find someone who will watch uh, my son.